it is slowly waking up. This underwater behemoth is rumbling and coming for us all. A volcano, to many, may seem like a mountain or a large mound of soil with a vent on the top from the surface of the Earth, but inside, it is a monster that is calmly waiting to devour us all. Although there are numerous volcanoes on the Earth's surface, there are also underwater volcanoes. Recently, the Kingdom of Tonga experienced one of the most dramatic and catastrophic volcanic eruptions ever recorded. Surprisingly, a volcano that is buried hundreds of meters under the ocean triggered it. Both the general public and volcanologists were terrified by the incident. Was this a brand new eruption kind that we had never seen before? How dangerous is the volcano Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai and what happened to it? Let's find out. An eruption started on the submarine volcano Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai in December 2021. It is located in the Tongan archipelago in the southern Pacific Ocean. On January 15, 2022, approximately four weeks after the eruption's initial start, it reached its largest and most intense peak. Global air shockwaves were generated by the volcanic explosion. In Japan, Utah, and the Blue Hill Meteorological Observatory in Massachusetts, shockwaves were said to have circled the globe up to four times. Although 12,000 kilometers away from the eruption location, Chennai, India, too, saw the pressure shockwave. It was hypothesized that the eruption column would temporarily chill the climate because preliminary measurements revealed that a significant amount of volcanic debris was blasted into the stratosphere. Subsequent analysis revealed that it was unlikely to have any global cooling effects despite injecting an estimated 400,000 tons of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. Even said, the eruption may have a cooling effect on the southern hemisphere, resulting in a modest cooling of the winters and breathtaking sunsets. According to reports, the Hunger Caldera's eruption was a once-in-a-thousand-year occurrence. The plume from Hunger Tonga Hunger Hapai peaked at 58 kilometers into the atmosphere, and continued to rise above 30 kilometers. Even though Hatipi released nearly 10 times as much material over the course of a prolonged eruption, the original explosive event may have been more intense. Over the course of 12 hours, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano erupted, spewing up to 1.9 cubic kilometers of ejector with a mass of 2,900 teragram. According to the ERA article, the eruption was associated with a VEI of 5 to 6. The VEI of the eruption, which is the greatest ever seen with current technology, is estimated to be around 6. Meanwhile, some scientists put the matching VEI at 5.8 and calculate the explosive yield to be between 100 and 200 megatons of TNT. In addition, research calculates that the eruption's energy output is equivalent to 61 megatons of TNT, making it more potent than the Tsar bomber, the greatest nuclear bomb ever exploded. Meanwhile, the eruption produced a sizable caldera that measured 4 kilometers in width. The caldera bottom is 850 meters or 2,790 feet below sea level, according to surveys. A volcanologist claims that the caldera walls are still continuously collapsing. The volcano may still be erupting underwater. Large sediment heaps, layers of fine mud and ash, and valleys up to 50 kilometers from the volcano were discovered during surveys of the seafloor in the area. The scan found that a 22,000 kilometer squared area of seafloor received an additional 6 to 7 cubic kilometers of debris. The eruption created the tallest known eruption column in history, which rose to an altitude of 57 kilometers and penetrated the mesosphere. The column produced a terrestrial gamma ray flare and multiple umbrella-shaped clouds, one higher in the stratosphere and one lower at a height of roughly 17 kilometers. The column released a significant amount of water into the stratosphere, disrupting the regional temperature balance and resulting in the development of anomalous winds. 146 million tons of water from the South Pacific Ocean were also launched into the stratosphere by the underwater explosion. 10% of the average stratospheric store of water vapor was expelled. 
it was sufficient to briefly warm the Earth's surface. An overabundance of water vapor is expected to linger for 5 to 10 years. The creation of aerosol layers that reflect sunlight and can result in a cooling of the temperature can be caused by massive volcanic eruptions that release significant amounts of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. However, during the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai eruption, enormous levels of water vapor were also present along with the sulfur, and this combination overrode the aerosol effect and led to a net warming of the climatic system. The danger that the eruption will cause global warming to exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit is increased by the warmth that follows, even though man-made greenhouse gases and climate policies to reduce them continue to be the main determinants of this risk. Although volcanic eruptions are rare, earthquakes are the most common source of tsunamis. Throughout the previous two centuries, there were less than 100 volcano tsunamis reported. An undersea eruption that partially devastated the island was thought to be the tsunami's likely cause, according to a GNS science official. The volcanic vents could now fill with seawater, which led to another underwater explosion the following day. The explosion was so massive that it broke through the seas below and caused a tsunami. Significantly, the explosion's airwaves combined with the ocean, creating further tsunamis far from the volcano. Typically, volcanic tsunamis do not extend that far. The impacts of the shockwaves on the tsunami as it radiated outwards were not taken into account by tsunami forecast models and alarm systems that were designed to function for earthquake-generated tsunamis. The eruption shockwaves led to unusually high waves near the Peruvian and Japanese coasts. Additionally, the tsunami waves arrived at the beaches earlier than expected. The 2-metre tsunami at Lambayeque, Peru claimed the lives of two people. On Mango Island, all buildings were reportedly destroyed. On Fonuifua Island, only two structures were still standing, and Namuka Island sustained significant damage. On Tonga Tapu's west coast, 21 residences were completely destroyed, and another 35 suffered significant damage. At Naku Alofa, eight houses were destroyed, and 20 were significantly damaged. Iua Island suffered 45 damages and the destruction of two dwellings. Atat Island sustained significant damage. The tsunami damaged at least 72 houses, and the entire island was covered in ash. Atat Island, which is off the main Tongan island close to Nuku Alufa, was reportedly flooded by the tsunami, according to early reports. Fifty residences on Tonga Tapu were destroyed, while another 100 were damaged. The New Zealand High Commission in Tonga announced on January the 17th that there had been severe damage to Tonga Tapu's west coast. The Australian Defence Forces surveillance flights noted significant damage around the west coast. On Namuka Island, satellite pictures revealed that more than 40 buildings were coated in ash and that about a fifth of the structures had suffered damage. Ash and mud coated the Fua Amutu International Airport. Also, there were complaints of water damage in the Nuku Alofa district. A tsunami that caused 500 meters of inland damage was reported by the Tongan Navy that was sent to the Hapai Islands. The tsunami's height was estimated to be between 5 and 10 meters. The eruption in Fiji caused waves to break on Vanua Baluva, Kaduva, Gao, and Taviuni. The tsunami in Mos, Lao Islands, badly damaged some beachfront homes, leaving debris across the community and carried boats inland. Schools, infrastructure, and fishing boats in the islands all sustained sizable damage. During the evacuations, Two people in Itoman, Okinawa, and Amami City, Japan, fell. In the prefectures of Chi and Mi, several fishing boats capsized or sank. Thirty fishing boats in total were lost. Five small boats at Maroto went down and another five were missing. In Owasi, a tiny ship overturned and sank. Fishing nets around the Tokushima prefecture shore were also harmed by the tsunami. Transportation by land, sea, and air was impacted. 27 domestic flights run by Japan Airlines were cancelled as a result of the warnings. A tour company 
in Kailua Kona, Hawaii, suffered severe material damage from the tsunami, and 80% of its equipment and inventory were lost. At least $75,000 in significant damage was done to the corporate office and retail goods. The city's beaches and piers were inundated by the raging waves. Due to the waves, canoes belonging to various clubs were harmed and left strewn on the beach or rock walls. The waters abated and the boats were thrown inland or onto piers. Due to the tsunami, 22 ports in northern and central Peru were shut down. Both the beach regions and coastal businesses suffered significant material damage. Waves at the San Andre district and Lagunilas Beach destroyed restaurants and yachts. While businesses were closed, many beachgoers were taken away to safety. In the capital, Lima, piers and several homes sustained damage. Some boat owners dragged their vessels onto the sand to protect them from the waves. On January the 17th, the Peruvian Civil Defense Institute reported that there had been an oil spill at the Lampapilla refinery. The ship that was carrying oil into the plant was moved by tsunami waves and resulted in the spill. A total of 1,187 square kilometers of water, 1,740 square kilometers of beach and coastal strip, and more than 1,200 acres of protected natural areas in Peru were impacted by the oil spill. Despite government warnings, some Californians ventured too close to the water and were washed away by powerful surges, as was the case at San Gregorio, California, where four fishermen were lost to the tsunami. Two guys were retrieved unharmed, but the other two required medical attention for their injuries. At China Beach in San Francisco, medical personnel saved and treated a woman. Three surfers were saved by San Francisco firefighters and the US Coast Guard. At the Santa Cruz Harbor in Santa Cruz, California, the tsunami caused significant damage to the electrical systems, pilings, bathrooms and showers, resulting in anticipated repair expenses of 6.5 million US dollars. According to the World Bank's damage assessment study for the Tongan government, the eruption and tsunami inflicted damages worth an estimated $90.4 million, or around 18.5% of Tonga's total GDP. According to the Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery, the tsunami damaged or destroyed 600 structures, including 300 dwellings. The cost of the damage was put at $43.7 million. At least 85% of Tonga's agricultural sector was negatively impacted, with crop and fisheries damage costing an estimated $20.9 million. Roads, bridges, ports and underwater cables sustained damage worth an estimated $20.9 million. US dollars. Moreover, the cleanup cost an additional $5 million. It was the biggest volcanic explosion since Mount Pinatuba's 1991 eruption, and the most intense since Krakatoa's 1883 eruption. According to NASA, the eruption was hundreds of times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The eruption, which was much larger than any volcanic event or nuclear bomb test from the 20th century, was the greatest explosion ever recorded in the atmosphere by contemporary instruments. The Krakatoa eruption of 1883 is regarded to have been the only modern event to rival the atmospheric perturbation it caused. With the use of ground-based gas sensors and equipment that can detect earthquakes and ground deformation, scientists are keeping an eye on the eruption. Also, there are personnel with cameras stationed nearby the active regions, as well as satellite devices that can track gases and heat. Our understanding of the possible risks posed by shallow undersea volcanoes has evolved as a result of this event. Intense efforts are being made to find other volcanoes worldwide that pose hazards similar to those posed by hunger, despite the exorbitant cost of undersea research vessels. A year later, we are aware of the causes of the severe Tongan eruption. This is a wake-up call to be ready when next an underwater eruption occurs. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.